Good evening, I'm George McKenzie, and here's the news. This man, whose back is to the camera for security reasons, is 35-year-old Gary Bodak, an admitted killer for the Underworld Crime Syndicate in South Florida. All this week, Bodak has been telling what he knows to a special Senate committee in Washington. But this evening, Action News heard from the organized crime unit of the Palm Beach County State Attorney's Office that much of what Bodak's saying is not true. Here's a portion of Bodak's testimony and a report from Lisa Brown at the state attorney's office. Did any emotion occur to you as you kill someone, uh, regret, remorse uh, afterwards, or is it, is it a part of the game? Is it the thrill of accomplishment and you've done a job well? It was just a job. Uh, some of the things had to be done because your reputation was at stake. There's a bit of apprehensiveness involved. I've never gone out and killed anybody that wasn't involved in the same type of life that I was involved in or hurt anybody that wasn't involved in the same type of life that I was involved in. So, in other words, we police our own. Gary Bodak is, he's either just plain stupid and is uh, just has lost sight of, of what kind of destruction he and his compatriots have, have wreaked on society, or he's just being clever. This is William King, head of the organized crime unit in Palm Beach County. He and his three-man staff have been working for eight months to put a lid on the growth of organized crime in our county. One of the biggest problems he faces is the common misconception that organized crime won't hurt innocent bystanders. Uh, organized crime uh, does prey on the innocent people and its effects can be seen from the destruction of, of our youth here with uh, the narcotics activities of organized crime. It can be seen to the disruption of families uh, that are perpetuated by organized crime engaging in uh, gambling uh, activities. Uh, it can be seen in the economic manipulation of, of people in society and of businesses. King says the biggest threat Palm Beach County faces is organized narcotic dealers who may not be members of the Mafia. His office is also working to crack down on hired killers and the corruption of government officials. It's an uphill battle, he says, because law enforcement agencies don't have enough money and resources to fight organized crime effectively. Lisa Brown, Action News. Remember those three Georgia prison escapees who kidnapped the Lake Worth couple last week? Well, the police have caught up with them. They're in jail tonight, but last Friday they stopped at a Lake Worth motel run by Robert and Betty Miller. They forced the Millers to drive them to Atlanta, then released them unharmed. But after that, Murphy Staffings and J.W. Wilkes kidnapped four more people, robbed several others, and then held up a bank. The car they used in that holdup was spotted by police. The fugitives were then tracked down and surrounded in Jasper, Florida, where they surrendered to a posse today. Locally today, police recovered the body of a Lantana man they think committed suicide last night near the Boynton Inlet. Harbor Patrol divers located 24-year-old Claude Gwynn's body floating in the intercoastal waterway north of the inlet. They'd been searching since last night when some witnesses reported seeing Gwynn tie a heavy rock around his neck and then jump from a rowboat. In the north end of the county, law enforcement agents were working on a different sort of assignment today. Marine patrol officers stopped 27-year-old Alonzo Gentry of Lake Park because his 25-foot boat was creating too much wake in the Jupiter Inlet. While they were on board, they discovered marijuana residue on the floor of the boat. The boat didn't have a registration number either, leading police to believe Gentry may be involved in a large smuggling ring. Gentry was charged with possession of marijuana. A toy pop gun has cost a West Palm Beach youngster the use of his right eye. The toy gun is called the Gunfighter, and it's exactly like the one you see here. Consumer Affairs Director Alice Skagg showed us today how the three-year-old boy took the gun apart, looked down the barrel, and then pulled the trigger. The toy was apparently bought in Highlands County and given to the child as a gift. Mrs. Skagg says none have shown up locally so far, but she urges parents to make sure their kids don't have one. They're merely warning people, and parents especially, to take a good look at all the toys given to their children, and by way of supervision, probably let them take it apart and see whether or not there are any sharp points or anything that can damage a child. Yeah. The child's injury may lead to a suit against that toy manufacturer. A big country club in Palm Beach County is having major financial problems. That and more still to come. Stay with us.
little relaxation with Lazy Days Cooking from Poplix. Bake a treat with Jewel Pre-Cream Shortening, only 99 cents for the 42-ounce can. Limit one with other purchases of $7 or more, excluding tobacco products. In the place for produce, all-purpose Delaware white potatoes are just 49 cents for the 5-pound bag. And Swift's Premium Whole Fryers, wrapped in our markets, are only 59 cents a pound. At Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. We'd like to show you a place in the beautiful, uncrowded Palm Beaches. It's called Poinciana Place. Every spacious, breezy condominium apartment overlooks a golf course. And so do the luxurious villas, the house without the headaches. A golf course, tennis courts, a huge pool, and a clubhouse with lots of daily activities. Nightclub shows and a fine restaurant. To the good life. To Poinciana Place. The Dark Continent. The dawn of a day's adventure. Bush Gardens, Tampa, Florida. The North Palm Beach Country Club is having some financial problems. After months of losing money on the club restaurant, officials are now considering closing the facility until September when business is expected to pick up again. Tonight, club members and city councilmen gathered to discuss the situation. The group talked about several alternatives, one to make members spend at least $20 a month on food, another to open a concession stand or ask for extra participation in the restaurant. The members seem to agree that their club should stay full service with the restaurant and they'll work towards that goal. While the North Palm Beach Country Club is having its problems, the city is actually expanding its recreation department for the public. The first phase of a neighborhood recreation center will soon be built here in Anchorage Park. Plans are in the works for the first two of four buildings to come. The North Palm Beach Village Council will award bids for the project sometime this week, and the actual construction should begin this fall. This phase will cost $45,000, and the entire project should run about $70,000. The playground will be improved, game equipment will be available for nighttime entertainment, and you won't have to be a member at this club. It's for all residents of North Palm Beach. Last night we told you about some kids working in a summer job program that could be out of work today. We're supposed to be, in fact. Well, tonight we're happy to report that it didn't quite work out that way. The so-called Speedy program was about to run out of money, which would have meant 1,500 area youngsters would be out of jobs today. But some federal funding that was tied up in red tape came through. $66,000, to be exact, arrived unexpectedly. So those youngsters can go back to work tomorrow, and the program can continue for the rest of this week, maybe part of next week, too. The honeymoon's over for anyone who hasn't gotten a driver's license for his or her moped. The law requiring such licenses went into effect July 1st, but the Florida Highway Patrol has just been issuing warning tickets to violators so far. Not anymore, says the FHP. The tickets they issue from now on will be the kind that cost you money. If you drive a moped, by the way, and you still have to get your license, remember, too, that a new mandatory registration law goes into effect soon also. There's a medical clinic in Boca Raton that attracts patients from all over the world, and some of those patients believe that getting to that clinic can be a matter of life and death. Frank Verdell tells us why. This is Arthur Frizzell. He's 52, and three years ago he was told he had terminal arterial lateral sclerosis, or Lou Gehrig's disease. Frizzell, who lives in Sydney, Australia, has traveled across the world to see if this man can save his life. Dr. Murray Sanders is one of today's modern pioneers of medicine. Using the deadly venom from the cobra and the crate snakes, Dr. Sanders uses that poison as the basis of a medicine, which he says is successful in treating the deadly disease. Dr. Sanders' process is the only one of its kind in the world. Two universities are studying his example, but for now, for the many people afflicted with the ALS disease, Sanders is their only hope. I've lost the use of my legs and I'm just hoping, first of all, that the disease will be stabilised and then perhaps that um, I will regain some strength in my legs, which would be great. I'm a Christian and um, with this I'm you know, looking forward to the future and uh, as to what happens, so I'll leave that entirely with the Lord and so I'm happy in that respect. Already 500 people have knocked on Sanders' door looking for help. 
Much still has to be done to prove conclusively that the venom treatments are successful in treating the disease. But already, many patients say the treatments are helping better their condition. Sanders and the patients had a scare this past two weeks when a shipment of the crate snakes from China was lost on the airplane trip. The snakes were found, however, and the venom will soon be on the way to Sanders' Boca Raton Clinic for use by the many people who believe the once deadly poison can help save their lives. Frank Verdell, Action News. Tragic fire in New York City today. We'll have details in a moment when Action News continues. Your Lincoln Mercury dealer announces Operation our Top Cat clearance of 78 Mercury Monarchs and Zephyrs is on. We're clearing out the 78s to make room for the 79s. Now's a great time to get into a 78 Monarch, because we're ready to sell, sell, sell. Or a 78 Zephyr, our newest Mercury. It's ready to go now. Top Cat values and trades. Our 78s must go. Make tracks to your Lincoln Mercury dealer. Operation Top Cat. Wow. New lifestyle frozen yogurt. A new kind of yogurt Frozen's the taste you were looking for Frozen will fit your lifestyle more New lifestyle yogurt from MacArthur And now MacArthur's got something new Lifestyle low-fat yogurt in frozen bars They're in your grocer's ice cream case in three natural flavors Raspberry, strawberry, and vanilla Got that? Keep your shirt on I've got a right to my opinion. And it's my opinion that Mr. Sherlock Holmes was nothing more but an old herring gut. You, you say that again. An herring gut. An old herring gut. Oh! Up to get you, worm. We'll see who's a herring gut. <laughs> it's all right, Watson. I take it back. Call off your dog. Holmes! Sherlock Holmes Film Festival for two weeks starting August 7th, 4 p.m. here on Channel 5. There was a very bad fire in a Brooklyn supermarket today, a blaze that took the lives of six firefighters and injured 34 others. The six were on the roof of the building when it collapsed, plunging them to the floor and trapping them in the rubble. The dead and injured were taken to a nearby fire station where relatives and friends gathered to find out who made it and who didn't. I just want to help my brother more. Oh, The fire was the worst to strike the New York City Fire Department since 1966 when 12 firemen died in a similar disaster. Commuters in Detroit had a hectic day today. Bus mechanics and sanitation workers continued their wildcat strike. They've been out for two days now and they're ignoring a court order to return to work. The Treasury Department has stopped selling savings bonds for the third time in history. A spokeswoman explained that the government has reached its debt limit of $752 billion and it can't go any higher without the approval of Congress. Some legislation to raise the limit to $798 billion has passed the House, and it's awaiting the approval of the Senate right now. The race is on. Representative Philip Crane of Illinois officially announced today that he wants to run for president on the Republican ticket in 1980. Crane's a conservative, and he made his first campaign promise today, too, pledging to run in all 36 state primaries. And I'm sorry to report tonight that comedian Toadie Fields died today. Remarkable lady. She was beset by physical problems for years, had a leg amputated, suffered from breast cancer. But often she used her impairments as material for her comedy routines. Several weeks ago, she was rushed to a hospital for heart problems, but a spokesman declined to give the cause of death today. They suspect it was a heart attack, though. Toadie Fields was 48 years old. And with that somber note, we turn to weather tonight, where we hope there is some better news. Well, George, uh, negatory on that. We have some bad stuff tomorrow. I thought it was improving today, but it looks like rain again for tomorrow. More of the same. Okay. And along with Glenn's forecast coming up, we'll have another segment in his special weather series tonight. It's about tornadoes that can strike before you even see them. Don't go away. You know, it doesn't take much to make a good house a dream house. Sometimes an extra room, or a new kitchen, or maybe central air, or a new roof. Well, First Federal of Broward has home modernization money to help make your house right for you. First Federal of Broward, friendly first. Home modernization money at very attractive rates to make your house a dream home. Come on in. Water's fine.
They're fools to take it out. Leave it the way it is. We're teasing Mrs. Baranowski. We told her we're taking the whitener out of Final Touch Fabric Softener. Listen. If my little boy is going around with yellow undershirts or gray dingy undershirts, how is that going to look? What kind of a mother am I? I want the whitener put back in Final Touch. Don't worry, Mrs. Baranowski. Final Touch will keep softening and whitening. Without our whitener, we'd be just another fabric softener. It seems some women can eat anything and everything and never gain an ounce. I hate them. I've got to count every single calorie. What's worse, I feel deprived if I can't have dessert. Thank heavens for dessert. The gelatin dessert with no sugar, low carbohydrate, only eight calories in a serving. Now at dessert time, or when I'm doling out cookies to the kids, I treat myself too. Deserta. You'll love the way it looks on you. We'd like to show you a place in the beautiful, uncrowded Palm Beaches. It's called Poinciana Place. Every spacious, breezy condominium apartment overlooks the golf course. And so do the luxurious villas, the house without the headaches. A golf course. Of course. Tennis courts, a huge pool, and a clubhouse with lots of daily activities. Nightclub shows and a fine restaurant. To the good life. To Poinciana Place. The weather tomorrow could be a whole lot better. We have a 30% chance that it won't rain here in the Palm Beaches, but uh, nevertheless, that 70% chance is uh, for all time periods tomorrow, so we'll like plenty of rain with us, along with the cloudy skies. Outside tonight, most of the rain has moved over to the Bahamas. The stars are beginning to come out. 74 degrees at the airport, 23 degrees Celsius. Our high today was 89. The low last night was 71. Our humidity at 85%. The sea level pressure is holding steady at 30.05 inches of mercury. And our winds are now from the southwest at 4 miles per hour. Our total rainfall for the past 24 hours is 1.15 inches. That registered in the official rain bucket out at Palm Beach International Airport. On the satellite map tonight, you can see most of the clouds over Florida, but we're not concerned with this right now. What we are concerned with is this thing right here. It's a big tropical wave that the National Hurricane Center in Miami thinks will develop into a tropical depression. They sent a Hurricane Air Force plane down there today. They did not find any circulation. Nevertheless, they are watching the system because it is developing slightly and will not, uh, hopefully not develop into a hurricane, but we'll keep an eye posted on that for you. Its system is moving to the west over the Leeward Islands tonight, and that's about 15 miles per hour. That should take it way south of Florida. That is definitely good news. Elsewhere around the nation today, very heavy thunderstorms erupted over North and South Carolina. Over in the Virginias, they had a couple of frontal clouds and water spots being sighted, none of them doing any damage. Around the Sunshine State, we're getting a lot of moist, unstable air coming in from the ocean and a little bit of a weather disturbance off the southeastern coast of Georgia. That's what's giving us the cloudy skies and the promise of more rain tomorrow. Elsewhere around the nation, a cold front dipping out of Canada today. It's located along the eastern Great Lakes and along right down through Colorado and along the leading edge of that cold front, some very heavy thunder showers. In fact, a tornado did touch down in southern Chicago today. It did not do any damage and nobody was hurt as a result of that storm. In behind the cool front, some colder temperatures. Many of uh, many 50s and 60s were seen along the northern plain states. Let's look at some of the afternoon high temperatures now in some of the major cities coast to coast. Today it was very sunny and temperatures reflected that sunny condition. 95 degrees, the hot spot was in Apalachicola, Florida today. Elsewhere we had a lot of thunder showers keeping the temperatures to the mid to upper 80s and that's what we have for us tomorrow. We have no rain to look at on the radar. Most of it is well over to the Bahama Islands right now. Just some light rain and nothing headed our way at the moment. Let's take a look at your forecast now. Mostly cloudy, kind of dismal tomorrow with a 70% chance for thunder shower. A daytime high should reach 90 and the low tonight will be around 72 degrees. For you boaters, if you can watch out for the thunder showers tomorrow, you'll find winds south and southwest at 10 knots, seas less than three 
feet. From the Jupiter Inlet northward, variable winds, mostly from the southeast, however, and the uh, seas will be also less than three feet. Now, weather conditions in, in South Florida especially often make it difficult to spot potentially dangerous weather, such as tornadoes. Yesterday, I showed you how tornadoes form and what part of a thunderstorm they are most likely to occur. However, in Florida, tornadoes are not often easy to spot. Look at this thunderstorm, for instance. There's a tornado swirling beneath this storm. Can you see it? The only way to spot the destructive winds in this tornado is to look at the ground, not at the sky. On the ground, you can see debris flying into the air. Another problem in spotting tornadoes in Florida is that they are sometimes hidden behind a wall of rain. In that case, your ears instead of your eyes are the best way to detect a tornado. If you've never heard the sound a tornado makes, it's terrifying. Its noise is like standing next to a freight train. Tornadoes can also occur at night. In that event, look at the ground and listen. Even though it's dark, you can see power lines being ripped down. And again, it's unmistakable sound. Tomorrow, a look at lightning and how you can save your electrical appliances from lightning damage. And we see a lot of phone calls during the past couple of days. People's television sets now on the blink, their air conditioners blown up. And tomorrow we'll have Harold Hayes of Florida Power and Light with our live action cam. That's at 5.30 tomorrow night on Action News. And we'll give you some tips on how to uh, save your uh, appliances. I know they're very expensive. And uh, during uh, electrical storms, they can sometimes just pop and burn right up. So we'll get uh, some information on that. Okay, thank you very much. And the much, tropical Bob. depression, the uh, Hurricane Center is sending another hurricane plane down there mm -hmm. tomorrow morning. We'll get a report for you uh, from the San Juan Weather Station yeah. tomorrow night. If that turns into a hurricane, it'll be named Bess. Bess. Okay, well, we hope Bess stays over the water. Yes. Doesn't go anyplace where it might hurt people. Buck, in sports tonight, Pete Rose came back with a vengeance. <laughs> but reading your script a little bit, I see you want to talk football. We'll talk a little football first, and we'll get to Mr. Rose in just a couple of minutes, George. Doctors removed some cartilage from the ailing knee of Miami Dolphins and defensive back A.J. Dewey and said he would be out of action for five or six weeks. The, the Dolphins' defensive situation was already complicated because of off-season knee surgery on the other two starters in the front three, Vet Vern Den Herter and second-year man Bob Baumhauer. While the Miami Dolphins announced tonight that the first Marine Banks throughout Palm Beach County will be the official ticket outlets for all Miami Dolphins games during the 1978 season, and that is indeed good news, and you'll be able to actually purchase your tickets at the banks. Tickets go on sale first thing tomorrow morning. Baltimore quarterback Burt Jones said today, running back Lydell Mitchell is hurting more than helping himself by staying away from training camp in a contract dispute. Jones says that few training camp holdouts are able to get themselves in proper shape for the season. With Billy White Shoes Johnson and Eddie Foster staying away from the Houston Oiler camp, former Texas Christian University wide receiver Mike Renfro has moved into the Houston Oilers starting lineup for Saturday night's game against Denver. We'll check baseball and other sports in a moment. Coronet always gives you quality paper products at a budget price. And now you can get extra savings. Just check the food section of your newspaper for a money-saving coupon. You wouldn't burn $1,000 of your own money, so why pay $1,000 more for your new car? Your Gold Coast AMC dealers are offering a spectacular year-end savings on luxurious new 1978 Concords. Save on price, save on mileage with a 78 Gremlin. It's the best time of the year to buy the Sharp AMC Pacer. Get additional year-end discounts on America's best new car values now from any of your Gold Coast AMC dealers in Lake Worth, Delray Beach, and Pompano. The believable people. Of Major League Baseball activity, looking at the scoreboard this afternoon, Philadelphia 8, the New York Mets 6, Randy Lurch wins 6-6, six and six. Jerry Kuzman loses, he's now 3-2 and two on the year, Chicago Cubs 3, St. Louis 2, Mike Kruko wins 5-0, oh. Merlio Lopez loses 0-1, 11 straight wins for the Cubs over the Cardinals. Tonight, Pittsburgh 3, Montreal nothing, Bruce Keeson and Kent Tuckulvey combined on a 3-hitter, 
Cincinnati six, Atlanta two, Tom Seaver wins at Preston, Hannah loses. Pete Rose four for four, two singles, a double, and a home run. Seems as though he's just a little upset at not getting any hits last night. San Francisco four, Houston two, we will update that is a final. Over in the American League, Cleveland over Kansas City five to two, and Cleveland swept that three game series. Two scores now, Baltimore six, Milwaukee five. That in a suspended game of Monday night. In tonight's regular game, the score is on the right. Milwaukee won that ball game five to three. Mike Caldwell wins, Jim Palmer loses. New York and Boston, the Yankees are leading five four in the eighth inning. There is a rain delay at Yankee Stadium. Oakland, California, and Minnesota, Seattle are late starters. In the Florida State League tonight, the Expos and Pompano Beach are playing a double header. We have the results of the first game. Pompano Beach won, the West Palm Beach Expos. All the other action in the Florida State League was rained out tonight. Buddy Baker driving an Oldsmobile at an average speed of 192.719 miles per hour today turned in the fastest speed during practice session for Sunday's Talladega 500. Qualifying for the Grand National Stock Car Race begins tomorrow at 1 p.m. Top seeded Eddie Dibbs defeated Van Winitsky 6 Love and 6 1 today to lead the top five seeds into the third round of the Volvo International Tennis Tournament. Also advancing in straight sets, Brian Gottfried, Emmanuel Orentes, Corrado Barazzuti, and Harold Solomon. 17 year old Steve Lundquist of Jonesboro, Georgia, has set a world record in the 200 meter individual medley during preliminaries at the AAU Long Course Swimming Championships in Woodland, Texas. And George, was it you telling me that Maggio, after his streak was stopped by Kenny Keltner, hit again in 16 straight, is that right? I think I read that somewhere. I, believe, I know he had a streak going mm -hmm. again, so maybe Rose is at it again. <laughs> Looks like Pete found another bat with some more hits. Oh, he was, he was miffed tonight. Look out, National League pitchers. <laughs> well, the wild birds of Florida, at least as far as we know, can't talk, but if some of them could, they'd probably be asking for your help. We'll have that story when we come back in just a moment. Well, being of some of Florida's most beautiful and priceless inhabitants. Far out in the western part of the county is a sanctuary that hundreds of injured birds can call home. The Bambi Bird and Wildlife Sanctuary takes in everything from doves to turkey, providing them with excellent medical care. When the birds are well again, they're free to go. No charge, of course, to Mother Nature. Couldn't do that. If they can't fly, though, the sanctuary becomes their permanent home, and certainly a beautiful one. There's always room for more birds, but what's needed is more people to care for them. So if you have some time on your hands, Bonnie Finley and her brother Wallace, who run the sanctuary, suggest that you get in touch with the Palm Beach County Animal Regulation Agency. They'll direct you to Bambi's place, where the patients are in need of some good old-fashioned TLC, tender loving care. That's it for Action News for tonight. For Glenn Burns, Buck Kennard, everyone behind the scenes, and the entire Action News team, I'm George McKenzie. Good night.